Okay, so let's start. Good afternoon, dear guests. Welcome to our sixth webinar on vertical farming as part of the Equine Plus project funded by the European Union through Erasmus Plus. Through this project, we aim to empower young individuals to embark on a journey that revolves around essential and interconnected topics on vertical farming and entrepreneurship, including topics on sustainability, climate change, ensuring food security, and adopting smart farming practices. Equin Plus is a two-year project that involves organizations from six countries, France, Austria, Greece, Turkey, the Netherlands, and Portugal. You can learn more about the project through our website, and I will um, um, paste the link in the comments in a bit. So it's our pleasure to introduce our esteemed speaker for today's webinar, Daniel Podmirsek. Daniel's educational journey took him through prestigious institutions such as the University of Technology in Vienna, the University of Applied Sciences, and the Academy of Fine Arts. In 2008, he showcased his expertise with a diploma on vertical farming for uh, the city of London. His expertise research continued culminating in a doctoral thesis titled Contribution of Vertical Farms to Increase the Overall Energy Efficiency of Cities, which was published by Colivier in 2016. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, in addition to his architectural journey, Daniel dedicated himself to teaching at the Institute of um, Building and Energy at Graz University of Technology from 2010 to 2015. He also served as a scientific member during the same period while completing his dissertation. Before we start, I want to mention that we have four more webinars on the topic of vertical farming coming up, and you can stay updated by visiting our Facebook page. Another uh, cooperation we set up uh, with uh, Wacheningen University, where we didn't explicitly talk about vertical farming itself, but thinking about urban farming and the future of the greenhouse in the city. And again, as a result, we simply see a lot of possibilities. So you see food production in the city is addressing all the key challenges what we are we get bombarded every day uh, with our newspapers and get frustrated by the non-action of politicians when it comes into the quality of water or water circulation, the energy generation, because by the end of the day, that what we are eating is energy. Kilocalories can directly be compared to kilowatt hours. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and here I'm coming to an end that will uh, speed up a little bit. So it is a complex matter. We have to acknowledge that on one side. And when it comes into sustainable architecture in the meaning of the word, then it is about the basic understanding what is the needed indoor climate, what is the building performance, what is the energy potentials from the climate data, and of course, what is the aesthetics, because the building has been accepted by the citizens, by the neighbors, etc. And the more accepted the building is, the more long lasting it will be on one side. And on the other side, and this is something what is really fascinating, that idea of vertical farming is already a half a century old. Yeah, I, I was in a privileged situation that I met the former CEO of Ruta International of um, Gartenbau. He is the son of the inventor, Oswald Rutner. And they already came up with these fantastic drawings, understanding the city as a metabolism in the 60s itself. Yeah. So we have to think about the technology readiness level, economic, economy readiness level, and how compatible are these with the, uh, sustainable development goals, but also learning from history. So we already had our pioneers. There is a lot of pre-work done. We simply have to bring these puzzles together and re-establish them in the city. Yeah? This is a tool what we are working with where you already in the very beginning get some key data. So what is the expected yield? What is the expected energy consumption? And what impact does it actually have? Yeah, Coming back again to CO2 emissions, uh, uh, land savings, water savings, etc. And the last thing I would like to share pretty quickly, also the developers start uh, have started to change their mind they actually understand that they have 
the biggest impact when it comes into the future of the city. Here we are talking about the urban development area of 100,000 square meters. And our task within a feasibility study now is to give them a sense in which parts of the building could be activated for food production. We have a huge pressure up there in terms of the expectations when it comes into rents. But on the other side, we have a lot of opportunities there because the energy of all the users will be for free. They are developing an energy concept for the whole urban development area. They are producing 140% more energy than they are expecting that it will be needed on site. Yeah, so the energy consumption is no longer a user issue, but it's a developer issue. So, and this project especially makes me very optimistic that we are on the right track. Yeah, again, that's what I was talking before. First uh, step is always what is the solar potential or the energy potential of the building and then start developing it. These are one of the last pictures. This is a fertigation system. Here we are talking about 19. Uh, let me just think, 1974. This is the guy watering the plants within a, a, a vertical farm. This is how it looked like at the day of the opening. And it already was ordinary. It already was normal just by seeing how um, uh, relaxed these two ladies in front of them are. And with that picture, I would like to conclude and say thank you. And I'm open for questions. Thankful presentation. Um, now, uh, maybe we should um, go towards the questions part. Yes, Marco is raising hand. Yes, hi. Uh, thank you very much for this. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. For this uh, very, very interesting presentation. I think it gives us another view. We, before in the other webinars, we kind of had this more traditional idea of a space kind of separated for a vertical farm itself for its own use and this gives us an idea of more like a blended into existing buildings are already you know operating as different things like a, uh, this image of the restaurant that has a vertical farm on top like a more integrated uh, into society kind of view very interesting thank you very much um i have a question uh, related to kind of the the challenges maybe in austria in an austrian context um what are some of the the challenges that vertical farming faces or obstacles um, compared to maybe other places? Are there some um, incentives perhaps, or not, maybe not enough incentives for farmers, vertical farmers uh, produce? I mean, since Austria is such a, um, uh, a country that farming is important, uh, maybe they prioritize uh, traditional farming rather than um, giving opportunity for new methods, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, my new, uh, how much time do we have? <laughs> Uh, but it's a very good question, yeah. Uh, I, I just share uh, some experience now. I mean, I did my PhD in 2015. It was in December and the months later we got funded as an association, yeah. And then there was a, it was a huge hype in terms of interest, yeah. And especially when it comes into uh, talking about uh, the potentials, what we actually have, then you have a, a, a small part of it where you actually find the right, uh, let's say, um, funding packages, FFG, Klima und Energiefonds, etc. So for basic research and research and development, it's, uh, I would say, it's okay. Yeah. And that also gave us the, the, the possibility to start, to start with. The other side is, it's a very conservative country, number one. And number two is, the Austrians don't have an inkling in how dependent they are from world agriculture or from the European Union. I just give you one number again I'm coming back to Marschfeld yeah but I also did a similar study for Everdinger Becken in Linz yeah and I published that in an interview Everdinger Becken is enough to feed to supply 1.5% of the people in Linz with that the day after I got an email from uh, the uh, Chamber of Agriculture of uh, Oberösterreich yeah that I should correct my number yeah, number one. Number two is after a very successful presentation at the ministry, after one and a half hours, I got asked by uh, the section chef, yes, fantastic what you are doing, but what do you need from us? We are here for the farmers. Of course, there are a lot of economic challenges, yeah. Um, 
and uh, it's very unjust. Yeah, for instance, if you just, I mean, the biggest budget from the European Union is for farmers. Yeah, we have to acknowledge that. And that won't change within the next five or six years because that budget is uh, already got released uh, three years ago on one side. But on the other side, COVID told us how important it is to radically increase this food supply in the city. Yeah, Our partner companies like Hut und Stiel or Blühen, Blühen, very important. Yeah, They already had a radical turnover increase within that period because people started thinking about where is our food coming from? And they have been happy that there are some suppliers within the city. So challenge number one, it's the mindset. It's a very conservative country. We have to acknowledge that. Yeah. So the, re, the, the huge steps will be made elsewhere. Yeah. And challenge number two, there is an unequal uh, balance when it really comes into subsidies. So and controlled environment agriculture to open that discussion. So not just related to uh, vertical farming, controlled environment agriculture must be integrated in uh, as a top point of the agenda of the European Union. And there is a farm tech society, for instance, who is really trying to push that forward in Brussels. Thank you. And never okay. forget, uh, and this is something where we have to acknowledge, yeah, the first vertical farm worldwide has been established in Vienna, developed by a Viennese company. So we are actually elaborating now the archive and I really uh, want to publish that material. We already scanned in more than 3000 uh, dias. What is the, 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 the English term for dias? Anyway, pictures. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so, so the status today is they set up 22 plant factories or vertical farms worldwide. They even set up a plant factory in 1978 for the younger Duffy. He was a pretty cute, nice, uh, or well-looking guy Yeah, back then. He wanted to start drinking milk, but for milk you need cows. He is living in the desert, so he has a water issue. So it actually makes sense setting up a plant factory and Rudner Internationale Pflanzenbau actually developed that and they produce 10 tons of biomass every day. Okay, do we have any more questions? I see there's one question in the chat. Um, are there any collaborations or partnerships between vertical farms and other agricultural stakeholders, such as traditional farmers or research institutions in Austria? Uh, with research institutes, yes. And from our side, with conventional farmers, no. But there is one example that I could share. There is also a partner company from us, uh, which are um, into aquaponics. And they are actually developing smaller facilities for, uh, for farmers. Yeah. So they have an additional revenue stream all over the year. And we have another question in the comments. Uh, what kind Marco of policy support or urban planning considerations are needed to include? Yeah, this is also a very good question. Um, we are also consulting uh, the municipality of Vienna uh, on that level. This has to be integrated in the in uh, the master plans from the very beginning. Yeah? So this already so that you don't have these um, uh, let's say area competitions. Yeah, we always define urban agriculture as the fourth column of the smart city. So there is no competition between residential and agriculture. And the moment when you, you are in an urban development area or you are developing the urban development area with the right master plan, then you can integrate it from the very beginning. So this is very important. Yeah. On the other side, you don't need any regulations. Uh, so the Flächenbiemungs- und Bebauungsplan in Vienna is enough to implement urban food production in nearly every, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the right word for Wiedmung, uh, zoning plan. Yeah. So except for resi uh, uh, residential buildings. Yeah? <clears throat> Um, policy support, yes, of course, it's a political issue. 
at the moment. Uh, so it's getting more dramatic from year to year. So I'm pretty, let's say, uh, optimistic that within the next five to 10 years, the European Union will have an additional uh, branch in terms of subsidies for controlled environment agriculture. Otherwise, we can't meet the future demand, you see as that. Any more questions from our participants? Yes, uh, it's very interesting. Can you tell us more about Vertical Farm Institute? Like your reason behind and everything. The reason, the reason is very simple. So uh, I got uh, in the last 30% of my studies, I got confronted with the peak oil curve. And I never heard about that before. So that put me in a pretty deep crisis. Yeah, so the whole uh, let's say civilization of us is dependent from cheap and abundant oil and gas. So therefore this key focus uh, somehow moved into the direction of developing um, energy efficient architecture. And the more I went into depth in that research, uh, I found out that the whole food sector is required, uh, is, uh, uh, needs 30% of the primary energy consumption. So out of these two ideas, somehow my conviction emerged that the vertical farm might be the most important building typology of the resilient city in the future. This means that we need uh, multiple disciplines to come up with a reasonable, uh, reasonable uh, product. Yeah? You need plant physiologists, you need architects, you need engineers, and uh, that makes that work uh, interesting. And this is how we are set up. Yes. So we, you can, uh, the easiest uh, way uh, to imagine the Vertical Farm Institute is a mixture between the research project, uh, research institute and the planning institute. Thank you. Okay, and we have another one in the comments, another question. Um, in the context of places that have a big percentage of agricultural land already, but a lot of the goods are exported. Um, okay, we are talking about Moldova. Vertical farming makes sense in this situation? Does vertical farming make sense in this situation? Uh, this is a very, very good question. I met um, some... Uh, um, guys in uh, North Macedonia this summer, yeah, we had a similar discussion. Um, it's not just uh, uh, Moldova or North Macedonia, there are some countries, especially in Africa, yeah, where uh, we should be ashamed of about our European Union policies, yeah, how we are, sorry my wording, fucking up their uh, markets down there, yeah. Uh, Vertical farming is, how can I uh, point that out um, on a simple way? Yeah? It could disburden these regions. Yeah? So if, if the, let's say, industrialized cities yeah, are, incre or are conscious about uh, their responsibilities when it comes into consumption of, uh, of land or the destruction of nature, the more they are increasing their uh, food production within the urban limits, then they are disburdening or distressing these areas uh, where they actually theoretically have agricultural land. But never forget the big picture on the world. Yeah. So we, this is our system border, uh, so system border where we, what we are calculating with. Yeah. We have an issue with agriculture, with the agricultural land in the future. So my position is very clear. We don't have that. Yeah. Theoretically, you could say, yeah, we can increase our productivity two times or three times, but we know that from several crops that we already reached their top. Yeah, let's see what genetics um, um, will bring, but this won't change it at all. And in addition, we are losing a lot of land, yeah, also worldwide, um, because of our practices on one side. Yeah, we are destroying the soil, number one. And then we have the phenomenon of desertification, as you know. So, it's not going in the right direction. And every cubic meter or square meter what you are activating within the city has a positive effect elsewhere because you are producing food on an already sealed surface. 
And another question in the comments, uh, it is about the regulations and uh, certifications for vertical farms in Austria, but I would add um, maybe in, in European Union as uh, like I think um, there are some other participants from other European countries. Uh, what is the question specifically? There are a lot of regulations. <laughs> if you, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, yeah. so in, in the um, in the comments, it's about quality and safety of the production. Um, yeah. Yeah. In Austria, for instance, you have Argus. Yeah, you can cooperate with. Yeah, number one. Number two, it's also the question: How are you selling your food? Yeah, is it is it processed or do you sell it as plants? So the moment, for instance, where you cut off the roots of a lettuce, it's uh, it's food. Yeah, and before it's a plant. So there are a lot of possibilities, but mainly we have this. Uh, we can use these regulations what greenhouse producers are already using on farmers. Yeah, so there it's it's not the need to uh, reinvent the wheel. So it's already overregulated. Great. Uh, maybe we have time for one more question. If there's still another question from the audience. OK, if not, maybe some last remarks from your side. From my side, um, it was a pleasure uh, chatting with you. So thanks again for the invitation on a personal level again i have to say we really should we all should think about in how to restructure our cities and food production might be one um, of these uh, um, or one of these parts of uh, in, in in a system which uh, has uh, the biggest impact Food production will be thing. part of daily urban life again. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Thank you very much again for this really nice presentation. Uh, this is part of a series of webinars that we've been having as part of the project. We will have four more uh, webinars with other um, experts and people that are working in the field uh, in not just in Austria, but in different parts of Europe uh, to kind of have different points of view of what's happening uh, regarding vertical farming, and um, well, also in Asia, we had a presentation from uh, uh, Indonesia uh, last presentation, which was also very interesting. Uh, completely different perspective. Uh, thank you again, and we hope to see you again, maybe taking part of the next webinars. And if it's okay with you, we will also like to maybe put some of the information about you in our website. Uh, this will be uploaded also as part of the project in, in the project's website and YouTube uh, for other people to also learn a little bit more about vertical farming, especially in Austria. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you very much and have a nice evening. Thank you everyone for participating. Goodbye. Bye.